What's up lovelies, it's your girl Lady Pelvic of Pelvic Gaming reviewing her first ever East game and Falcom game, East Memories of Salsetta for the PlayStation 4. The definitive version of East 4. Now, this game has an interesting history. Originally, East 4 Dawn of East was developed by Hudson Soft for the TurboGrafx-16 in 1993. And then in the same year, East 4 Mask of the Sun, same game, different name, was made by a completely different developer, Tonkin House for the Super Famicom. And then fast forward to 2012, East Memories of Soseta came out for the Vita, and eventually in 2019 for Steam and PlayStation 4. I'm not going to be talking about the other games too much. This review is going to be focusing on Memories of Salsetta. And special thanks to Riku Sun One for gifting me this lovely experience. Now, where to begin? <laughs> the story starts off pretty cliche. You're Adol Kristen, an explorer who has the super rare condition called Amnesia. The entire game is about retracing your footsteps along the land of Salsetta. Adol apparently traversed the Great Forest once before, and you're hired to do it again for the Roman army, as it's uncharted territory. What starts off as a simple task of regaining your memories and exploration leads Adol and company to something world-threatening. Now, the story may not be the strongest point, but I actually enjoyed it. Many people told me to lower my expectations, and I guess I lowered them to rock bottom because I was pleasantly surprised. Sure, it isn't groundbreaking or jaw-dropping, but it was way better than I expected. They played up the amnesia gag pretty well. Each new village you come by has some bad news involving Adol, and the dialogue is whimsical and funny. I absolutely love revisiting towns after a major story point for some hilarious conversation. I enjoy the world building, which I would argue does not get enough credit, and of course, the characters. Memories of Salsetta doesn't take itself too seriously and was just the right amount of goofy and sincere. I truly believe if Salsetta tried to go deeper and expand on its story, it would have taken away from what makes an East game phenomenal. The combat! And this is East! Ali, the best part of Memories of Salsetta, god damn it. This is why you play East. The combat is so good, it rivals Tales of Graces F as my favorite action JRPG. And that kills me to say as a Tales of Graces F fangirl. I could not, for the life of me, put this game down. For the three days it took me to beat, I was obsessed. Silky smooth, fast paced, and fun action combat. Oh my lord, smack enemies around with a standard attack, but rather than swinging wildly, if you wait to charge, you'll gain more SP for that one attack. SP is used for your skills seen by the blue petal gauge. Use skills to attack and your circle yellow gauge will begin to fill. That will allow you to do an extra skill, which is pretty much your super mega ultimate attack. This is a fantastic flow, encouraging the player to wait, time your attacks, while getting a heavy flow of SP so you're constantly switching between standard attacks and skills. Add in flash guarding, guard just at the perfect moment to negate damage and do automatic crits on your next attacks. This is a perfect time to unleash your extra skill, by the way, because yes, the entire attack will be critical. Or flash move, which makes enemies slow down for a few seconds, much like Bayonetta's Witch Time. Monsters' attacks are pretty easy to read patterns for the most part. However, because of how flashy the skills are, sometimes it's hard to see what's going on on screen. Oftentimes I found myself dashing or guarding and I happened to land that perfect timing and just rolling with it. But even so, it felt good when you purposely or accidentally timed your movements and you got into this rhythmic pattern and lay waste to these enemies. It's crazy because these enemies can take you less than 10 seconds to beat if you're swift, but can really mess you up if you get too cocky and button mash. It's a lot of learning enemy patterns, when to dodge, when to guard, and once you understand that, it is easy breezy. Boss fights are fucking killer. Different patterns, sometimes you had to chip away at their armor before they entered a day state. It was a lot of flashy fun. Now, there is one place combat severely fails, and that is in the water. It's pitiful. Attacks are slow, there's no combos, it literally removes everything you love about the accelerated combat. A few other things to concern yourself while in battle is party composition. There are three types of attackers, slash, strike, and pierce. Each enemy has something they're strong and weak against. You have an active party of three. If you have two of the same types of attackers, the party's attacks will be stronger. If you have all three attack types, there's a higher chance of a rare item drop. And you could also control AI if you want them to attack or evade. This really encourages playing with different characters, because let me tell you, once I switched off at all, I hardly ever went back. 
Speaking of skills, other skill bonuses include skill finish, where if you kill an enemy off with a skill, you regain half of the SP it costs. And excellent kill is when you land bonus gold for killing an enemy with the appropriate attack type. Make sure to check enemies' weaknesses while in combat or consult the journal. Skills level up the more you use them, and you visually see it too. Sometimes an extra attack is added on, or a status effect, or it just simply does more damage. My personal favorites to play as is Frida, due to her ability to freeze enemies, Karna with her throwing knives and at all because of course. Now you may have to do some control configuration because the controls are kinda weird. You may find yourself accidentally switching characters when trying to use a skill as there's some uncomfortable button overlap going on. On the flip side, switching between active party members is as easy as a push of a button. Sometimes one character will be getting dogged on and you'll find yourself in a stun lock situation, which actually brings me to the AI and for the most part it's pretty good. Also good to know AIs can't die, they'll just stay at 1 HP, so if you're about about to die, switch to a different character and spare yourself a needless death. The second best thing about East is the exploration. The mapping, traversing, the puzzles are fantastic. Run through the lands and the map will uncover itself. You'll find collection points where you'll harvest materials to craft items. You'll find monuments. These stone markers not only heal you but cure all status ailments and you can use them as warp points. At first you can only warp to monuments of the same color and later it becomes any monument. And if you land a game over, you'll return to the most recent monument. While traveling through Salsetta, keep a lookout for Adol's memories. The screen gets all fuzzy when you're nearby a memory, and when you touch it, you and your party will fully heal, but be careful because enemies will also return. I love the mapping system so much. It does a fantastic job of marking all the monuments, campsites, harvest points, chests, story quests, and side quests. Although it's important to note the minimap does lack all the icon information the main map has. Quests can be found on the town's bulletin boards. It can be fighting a tough monster, collecting this, or testing out special weapons. Be warned, if marked as urgent, that means the quest can only be completed within a certain time, so don't be like me. Now, a tiny gripe I have is if you're going for that platinum trophy, you're going to need to 100% the map. And the game can be a little fickle about what it counts as explored and not. Dungeons is another thing I want to touch up on. They are way better than what I expected. They're not too long, but not too short either. They're just the perfect amount and have different puzzles which require different characters' unique actions. For example, Karna can cut down hanging objects or Ozma can break cracked walls, leading to new paths. Now, my issue is if you don't have the correct character, you gotta go to the menu and switch them in. Do the action, then switch them out, and that disrupts the pace. Also, artifacts are unique items that grant the entire party different powers. Like the dwarf bracelet shrinks the party down to get into small areas, or water dragon scales allowing you to swim. And lastly, a few other things here, trading. You could trade one type of item dropped for a stronger drop, which will sell more. You can do this in bulk, and I like this. You can craft things in bulk, but you know what you can't do? Upgrade your weapon in bulk. Select an item you want to fuse with your equipment in order to inflict or negate status effects. You could only do this one at a time. You can't use eight of the same material to raise your poison effect eight times in one go. Honestly, that discouraged me from upgrading my weapons. Thankfully, you don't have to rely on this to have a smooth playthrough. Next up, the graphics and um, it's not really a selling point. It's like a high resolution PlayStation 2 game. If you can recall, this is a Vita port and it shows, but it does look great on the PS4. Their faces are painted on, bland textures. On a positive note, I love while you're exploring and when you're nearing your destination, you get this distant view. Honestly, it's so beautiful. I just wish the lands you traversed was just as beautiful. I was hoping for landmarks or unique areas. People say this game is all about exploration, and while it's satisfying to uncover the map, it's because it's fun to fill out that space, not because, wow, this land is beautiful or interesting. I have to say, I love the fixed camera. I thought it was very well done. I was never wondering what was going on. To me, not controlling the camera lifted a burden. To some people, it might be a lack of control. So, you know, opinions may vary on this. Even the art, I think, looks super generic, in-game, or even the box art. If Memories of Salsetto wasn't gifted to me, I would have never have thought to pick this off the shelves because it looks pretty damn basic. You know what is a selling point? The music, and holy crap, it fits the game so well. It's fast paced, high energy, and empowering bops. It's so good. I was blown out of the water. I love it all, baby. The battle themes, town themes, what stole the show, hands down, is the field themes. Each area you go to has different music. Some are actually more peaceful and relaxing sounding.
while others are straight hardcore rock and roll, Issa's field themes are unmatched. And mentioned before, East 4 was made twice prior to Memories of Salsetta, and thus have some of the same songs. And I'ma be real, the original East 4 soundtrack is fire. Made me want to play them, actually, if only for the music. This is the first town in Memories of Salsetta, Kasnan, and frankly, it's my favorite town theme. In the original games, the soundtrack is called Promolock. say East Memories of Salsetta gets a 9 out of 10. Listen, I'm gonna keep it real. A lot of people say Salsetta's story is mid, and I'm not gonna tell you to play an East game for its narrative, okay? The combat and exploration is where Salsetta excels. But people are really downplaying Salsetta's story. The cast of characters is fun, and I think the game gets better the more characters that join you. And the world building is fantastic. In fact, there's even more gems in this game if you've played prior East games, which when I was doing research, I found out, and I thought that was really cool. Yo, a JRPG story doesn't need to be complex and intricate and overwhelmingly dense to be good. I for one find it refreshing to find an easy to follow story in a JRPG, a fun cast of characters with jovial moments. In fact, I commend this game for knowing itself. It put majority of its eggs in the combat gameplay basket and a few in storytelling. And that's not to say that a game can't have both, but Sasada knew what it was and it didn't try to be anything more. Aside from water combat, upgrading items, switching characters for unique actions, East Memories of Salsetta is fantastic. If you are in the market for a short and fulfilling action JRPG with story having a lighter emphasis, I cannot recommend East Memories of Salsetta enough. Thank you so much for watching Top Box for more videos like this in the bottom box is my Let's Play channel. Also, please consider checking out my Patreon, join the Discord, get prints, we have a grand old time. We also play games together, we have a little book club event which helps flush out some of my reviews. That said, love ya and I'll see ya in the next video. Mwah.